everybody, my name is Chef Taylor and welcome back to the Rooks to Cooks Lunch Club. Today we're going to be making some quesadillas and fresh pico de gallo together, so let's get started. First things first, always make sure you've got some nice clean hands and I've got my cutting board set up here. We're going to start off making our pico de gallo, which is a fresh salsa. So we've got some tomatoes, onion, some lime, salt, and I'm also gonna put a little bit of parsley in. Normally pico de gallo has cilantro, but I don't have any cilantro in my fridge right now. So you can go ahead, put cilantro, put parsley, even chives, or you can leave out the herbs altogether. I'm gonna be using my food processor to make our pico de gallo together, but first I wanna get things broken down into a size that's gonna fit inside my food processor. So I'm gonna take my lid off. So you can see I've already got my onions cut in half, so I'm gonna go ahead and add these in and my fresh tomatoes. I'm gonna cut these guys into quarters so that they're a little bit easier to blend up. We want our pico de gallo kind of chunky. We don't want it fully smooth or pureed. So when we go to turn on the processor, we're gonna pulse it. That's just gonna let us control the texture that we have. If you don't have a food processor at home, you can also make this by hand just by using your knife or you can make it in a blender. Lots of tomatoes going in this pico de gallo. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to zest my lime and add my lime juice. Now, the zest of a lime comes from the skin. So this green part, if you scratch it and give it a smell, it's like the best scratch and sniff. You get all the fragrance of the essential oils that are in the lime. You can do this with any citrus fruit, uh, lemons, limes, grapefruit, oranges. A lot of that flavor lives in that skin. So I'm gonna use my microplane to get just the green part. We wanna avoid the white part underneath, that's called the pith, because that can be a little bit bitter. So I'm gonna zest it right into my food processor, just getting the green part off. And you can see as I go underneath, there's that white part, that pith. That's the part we're trying to avoid getting. So I'm just gonna go all the way around and this is gonna give a really nice bright flavor to my pico de gallo. Once we've got our salsa made, then we're gonna start working on our filling for our quesadillas. Today, I'm gonna to be using some ground beef for mine, but you can use whatever veggies you like. We've got a spice blend we're gonna to make together. You can even use cooked lentils, ground chicken, or tofu for your quesadillas. All right, now that I've got my zest inside my food processor, I'm gonna slice my lime in half, and I'm gonna add the juice in there as well. We want to get all of that bright flavor inside. Juice right into my food processor. Now I like to cook a lot with fresh citrus. I've got lots of lemons and limes that I add into salad dressings and sauces. So I've got one of these juicers, but you definitely don't need one. You could just cut your lime in half and use a fork to squeeze some of the juice out. All right, my parsley is gonna go in. And I'm gonna season this once it's already blended up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. And what we're gonna do is pulse it. So we're just gonna go in these short little bursts so that we can see how much it's blending up our pico de gallo. We don't want it super smooth, so I'm making sure that I'm checking to see the size of my vegetables that are inside that food processor. That's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of my food processor. I'm gonna transfer it into a bowl, season and taste it, and then we'll move on to making our quesadilla filling. All right, chefs, now that we've got our pico de gallo all finished up in our food processor, we can work on the filling for our quesadillas. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my burner on to nice medium high heat and add a little bit of oil to my pan. Now today for our quesadillas, we're gonna be using some ground beef and making a spiced ground beef filling to go along with our cheese, but you can go ahead and use whatever you have or whatever you prefer in your quesadillas. You could use sliced chicken, ground chicken, you could use just veggies if you want. Onions and peppers are really traditional for quesadillas, so you can really make it your own. The key is that we have cheese and they're gonna be super tasty when we cook them up in the oven. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my ground beef into the pan and you'll notice that Right now my ground beef is looking kind of red, a little pinky. It's gonna turn brown once it starts to cook. So we're gonna look for that color change to know that our beef has cooked. I'm using my spoon to get my beef out of my bowl so that I'm not contaminating my hands. This way I don't have to stop and go wash my hands. Everything is gonna be on my spoon and it's gonna get cooked together in the pan. 
Anytime you're working with any kind of raw meat, so raw beef, chicken, fish, you wanna be mindful of how you're touching it. And if you're getting that raw meat juice on your hands, if you do, that's totally fine. You just wanna go make sure that you go wash up your hands, get nice and clean before you come back to touching anything else. You don't wanna transfer any of that bacteria or contaminate anything with that raw meat. So I'm just starting to be able to hear my meat in the pan and I want to listen for that sizzling sound because that's going to be my first indication that my beef is starting to cook. Now while it's cooking I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my spice blend here and this is really key for having some kind of some Mexican flavor in our quesadillas. So in here I have some cumin which is nice and smoky, I have some smoked paprika, chili powder, some salt, dried oregano, garlic powder and onion powder. So this is a super flavorful blend. I can smell it when I shake it up. And this is gonna go into our beef once it's kind of halfway through cooking. Adding our dried spices in while our meat is still cooking allows them to bloom and wake up in the beef fat that's coming out of our meat as it cooks. This is gonna really intensify those dried spice flavors. You can see my meat is starting to turn brown in my pan. And a little bit more of that fat is coming out of the meat. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add my spice blend in now. All of that goes in. And as soon as that hits the heat, I can already smell it. Kind of smells like tacos in here right now. So I'm giving that a good stir. You can see how the, the cayenne and the paprika that are in there, that's changing the color of my beef a little bit as well. And I wanna make sure that I let those spices cook in that oil and that beef fat for a good minute before I add any other flavor to it or any other liquid. Now because we want to make sure that our filling is nice and juicy, we're going to add a little bit of vegetable stock. If you don't have vegetable stock, you can always use water or chicken stock, whatever you've got at home. And a little bit of tomato paste. Now the tomato paste right now is bright red because it's fresh out of the can. When it's done cooking, it's going to deepen and be a darker rusty red color and that's how we know that we've cooked out a little bit of the acidity in that tomato paste. While this is cooking, that extra liquid from the stock is going to make everything nice and juicy, but it's also going to start to thicken. So right now this is looking pretty much like a taco filling. It's what we want. I'm going to let it cook another minute or two, and in the meantime I'm going to talk about our tortilla. So we're using flour tortillas today. You can use corn tortillas, whatever kind of tortillas you are interested in, in making. Okay. And we're going to take our tortillas, we're going to fill them with our cheese and our filling and fold them in half to make our quesadillas. This way everything is sandwiched neatly in between our tortillas and we can go ahead and cut it up when we're ready to serve. This is looking really juicy. I just want to cook it another minute or two to get rid of some of that extra moisture. I want it juicy but I don't want it too wet. Once these are nice and crispy and ooey gooey cheesy from being in the oven, we're gonna serve them alongside our fresh pico de gallo. And if you're into it, you can even have some sour cream on the side. This smells so good right now. Very excited for our Mexican inspired quesadilla lunch. I'm gonna give this a quick little taste and make sure my seasoning is where I want it to be. I can always adjust with a little bit more of my dried spices or some salt if needed. That is so flavorful. There are so many spices going on in there. I can taste all of them. Feels like a fiesta going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off the heat, move it to the side. Now because we're doing our quesadillas in the oven, I've got a cookie sheet here that we're going to make our quesadilla right on top of. So I have my flour tortilla, and then I'm going to spread a whole bunch of cheese all over. Now I'm just going to make one quesadilla right now, but you can go ahead, however many you're making, if you're making a quesadilla for you know, your brother, your sister, your mom or dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever is gonna have lunch with you, you go ahead and make, you make all those quesadillas at once and they can all go into the oven at the same time. So I've got my nice layer of cheese. I'm gonna put some of my seasoned beef filling in here. I want a nice thin layer so that I get a little bit of that meat in every bite. And of course, a lot of cheese in every bite because cheese is really key to making a nice gooey quesadilla. 
I'm gonna go ahead and fold it in half and give it a little press. And now this is ready to go in the oven. So at this point, my oven's already preheated. I went ahead and preheated it to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're home and you're making this, make sure you've got an adult who's here to help you with the burner and getting things in and out of the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead, put this in the oven, toast it up, and the tortilla itself is gonna get crispy, and all that cheese on the inside is gonna melt and get nice and gooey. So we'll come back and see it once it's finished in just a few minutes. All right, chefs, I've got my quesadilla here out of the oven. It takes only eight to 10 minutes to get everything nice and crispy, crunchy, and that cheese really ooey gooey. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it and show you what it looks like on the inside. You hear that crunch of that quesadilla, and we've got lots of gooey cheese. So I'm gonna grab my plate, plate up my quesadilla for lunch. And very important, don't forget our pico de gallo that we made together in the beginning. I'm looking forward to having this for lunch and I hope you are too. I hope you've had a lot of fun cooking with me this week and you have a great weekend and I'll see you again next week for some more Rooks to Cooks Lunch Club. Thanks everyone.